Nahum 1.7 says, The Lord is good, a stronghold in the day of trouble, and he knoweth them that trust in him. Greetings, my friend. Thank you for tuning in. And I am trusting in Him. I'm trusting that this particular message will not offend you, but inspire you. It's not going to be something pleasant, but it's going to be something of truth. And if you will, I would really highly recommend that you would turn in your Bible to the book of Psalms. And that great lengthy psalm of all psalms, 119. Would you do that? If you have the ability to do that, if you're not driving or someplace where you don't have a copy of the Bible, I would understand. But if you have a copy and you can look upon this verse or verses with me, I believe it's necessary because it, the very fact that you would listen to this channel and listen to this old time preacher is an indication that you do have the desire to know and understand the Word of God and the old time religion. I'm in Psalm 119 and I'm going to read just a couple of verses here and then I'm going to give you something that I really want you to understand. Psalm 119, and here's what I'm reading. I'm going over to verse 125. And verse 125 says, I am thy servant. And believe me, I am. He says, I am thy servant. Give me understanding that I may know thy testimonies. Literally, that I may know your word. Now watch this verse. It is time for thee, Lord, to work. Boy, is that not the truth for this hour. It is time for thee, O Lord, to work. For they have made void thy law. Am I not giving you the blessed truth out of this book as to what situation we're in today? And now watch this. They have made void thy law. Therefore, I love thy commandments above gold, yea, above fine gold. Therefore, I esteem all thy precepts concerning all things to be right, and I hate every false, false way. Now, Father, whoever would listen to this particular sermon, please, dear Lord, by thy power of the Holy Spirit, speak to the hearts. I ask it and pray it and believe it in Jesus' name. Amen. I heard this statement not long ago. And the statement came from those who have been familiar with my ministry. And here's the statement. Preacher, you've changed. <laughs> well, for they have made void, they have made useless, they have made ineffective thy law. Yes, because of that I have probably, in some areas, changed. And I'll express that and explain it in just a moment. But let me say this first. I'm going to probably say some things in this particular message that's going to be probably a little straightforward. And if you don't want to be offended, if it does offend you, then I would suggest that maybe you don't listen to the rest of the message. I've... <laughs> I've never done this before, but I thought I'd try being straightforward. And that's a joke, of course. If I say something that you do not like in this message, I would advise you not to write me a letter or telephone me or criticize me 
because the truth of the matter is I don't plan to quit of what I'm going to preach. We are living, honest to God, you hear it all the time, but we do nothing about it. But we're living in an age where it's not the time to be vague. It's not the time to hold back. It's not the time to tiptoe through the tulips or tithers. It's not that time. These are not days to not be understood. These are days to raise the banner high. Hi, these are the days to draw the proverbial line and say, don't cross over this line. We're living in that day. No question about it. We didn't, listen, some of the things I will preach, probably even in this message, I would not have maybe had to preach or preach maybe numbers of years ago. But because they didn't need to be said maybe years ago as much as they need to be said right now. In verse 127, you'll note the one word of Psalm 119, and the one word is, therefore. Anytime you have that word, you are connecting the next statement to the statement that was given before. In other words, therefore. Now listen, verse 126, it is time, he says. For the Lord to work, because they have made void thy law. Therefore, listen, you understand the entire Psalm 119 is about the Bible, God's Word. You probably already know that, but it is. And sometimes God calls His Word different things. He calls them statutes. He calls them commandments. He calls them words. He calls them the law, the judgments, precepts, testimonies, and so forth. And the 119th Psalm calls God, God's Word all these different names, but they're referring to one thing, and that's this Bible called the King James Bible. Those different names, whether it be the commandments or statutes or words or judgments or law or whatever, is referring to the King James Bible, the Word of God. Now notice the word, therefore, or because they have made void God's word, I love thy commandments above gold. That's what it says in verse 127. Did you see that? Because they have made it void, I love the commandments of the word. The psalmist said, I love the word of God. I love it above gold. Then in verse 128, he says, I esteem all of it. I esteem it all. Note what he says in verse 128. He's saying, because I love the word of God, I hate every false way. Get this. What made him increase his hatred for every false way? What made him increase his esteem and love for the Word of God more than ever? Answer, verse 126. They, the wicked, the liberals, the ungodly, have made void thy law. He was saying they have made void God's word. They have made void this book that I'm preaching from right now. And so consequently, since they have made void thy law, the psalmist said, I love it more. I love the law more. I love the Bible more. I love the word of God more. Notice what the psalmist is saying. Notice the progressive reaction. They have made void thy law, so I love it more. They have made void thy law more, so I love it like gold. They have made void thy law some, uh, some uh, more, so I now, I love it like fine gold. They have made void thy law some more, so I esteem the word more. They have made void thy law some more, so I hate every false way. They have made void thy law some more, so I hate every false way more, more and more. The more you hate it, the more I love it, the more I esteem it, the more I honor it, the more I'll preach it. Because they have made void, empty, unusable thy law. He's saying, I love the book, and the more the world hates it, 
The more the, the liberals hate it, the more I love it. The more the world disobeys it, the more I'm going to love it and obey it. God, help us. You understand, the more the world goes into sin, the more I hate sin, the more the world is going in the direction it's going right now in the wicked, vile, ungodly, unbelievable ways of sin, the more I hate sin and the more I separate myself from it. Have I changed? Yeah. Here's what he's doing. The psalmist is equating his love for the Bible and his defense for the Bible and his hatred for sin directly to the proportion of the people making void the, uh, the, wor the Word of God. That's exactly what's happening here. So right now, I'm letting you know that the accusation against me is true. Yes, I have changed. But so did the psalmist. He said so right here. The psalmist said, they made void the word of God, so I changed and loved it more. They made it void, I changed. I love it more. I've changed by loving the Bible more and hating sin more, is what the psalmist said, and I want to apply that as my own personal testimony. He said, the more they made void the word of God, the more I changed. Listen to me. He was saying the more they changed that way, I changed this way. The farther they went to the left, the more to the right I'm going to go. Boy, that's a good thing politically as well. Preacher, you preach harder and take a stronger stand than you used to. Is that right? I have to. I do. I change. Brother Miller, you're more intense. You're not what you used to be. You, are, you, are, are, are you changing? Yeah, I'm changing. I'm changing the more against those who have made void the law and those who have accepted the sinfulness of this old world. Yes, I've changed and I plan to keep on changing. The worse they get, the more right I'm going to try to be. Well, Brother Miller, you're more intense. I know. Do you know why I have changed? Because the enemy has changed. The more the liberals like Biden and Harris and Obama and Schumer and Pelosi, or you just name them, the more they make light of this book, the more I'm going to make bright this book. Absolutely. The more excited the charismatics get, the more excited I'm going to get. More than, the, more than the charismatics. The psalmist said, they have made void thy law, therefore. In other words, the less they make of that book, the more I will make of it. Amen. I came to do my own amening. Listen, the degree of hatred to sin ought to be in proportion to the committing of sin in our generation. Let me state that again because I'm telling you, God's people are not doing this. As far as I can tell, God's people are not doing this. But the degree of hatred to sin ought to be in proportion to the committing of sin in our generation. A preacher ought to preach harder against sin now than he did 50 years ago or even 25 years ago. 50 years ago, we had a pretty peaceful nation, actually. There was not much crime. There was certainly not as much open sin as there is today. God knows that's true. I'm telling you, this is true. Shoot, 25 years ago, the queer was still in the closet. Did you hear what I said? 25 years ago, the queer was still in the closet. I didn't just decide to get meaner. The worse sin got, the meaner I get. The more they attack this book, the madder I get. And that's what God is saying right here in this Psalm 119. And it's time that all of God's people join with me in that attitude. It's time that you change too. And it's time that we step out, 
roll up our sleeves and come out swinging against this kind of wickedness that's prevailing in our country today. It's time we do it. It's time we got just as mean and ornery and ugly about the sin that's being committed. And, and it's time that we begin to love the, the Word of God and love God and love the Lord Jesus Christ and love His church more than ever. The worse it gets, the better we ought to get. This is not the time or the age for a pussyfooter or a panty waist. Onward, Christian soldiers, marching as unto war. Amen. The psalmist didn't say, I sat down under a shade tree. He said, I hate every false way. Paul didn't say, I bowled a 200 game or shot a good score in golfing. He said, I fought a good fight. Paul didn't say, I showed a good Christian film. He didn't say we had a good drama. He didn't say we went to Vespers. He didn't say we gathered around the Word. He said, preach the Word. Be instant in season and out of season. He said, I have fought a good fight. And if you preach the Word of God, you're in a fight. People hate it. People ignore it. People despise it. Listen to me. Some of you listening to me right now let me just take some of you ministerial students who may be even preparing for the ministry. You who say you are called, it's time then for you right now to show your stuff. They have made void this book. Preacher boy, young ministerial boy, young pastor, what are you doing about it? They have made void this book that you're supposed to be preaching, upholding, lifting, and giving out the truth. Look, if your building caught on fire, your house or building, those same firemen who are now watching TV or playing checkers at the fire department would become fanatics to put out the fire. Why? Because that is their job. And we preachers need to become fanatic. You preacher boys need to become fanatics. Why don't you see the fires of hell are burning our country, that's burning our churches, burning our children? We need to get excited about this thing. Don't just go to church and every once in a while give an amen to, to it. Do something about it. Get involved in it. I think I might just sign up for another 20 years myself. I'm 85 right now. I'm just going to go for it and preach for 20 more years across America. And I'm going to change from just being a, 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 a so-called preacher. I'm going to be a I'm going to be a fired up preacher. And as much as they make void this law, the more I am going to preach it. My, my, my. The more they make void the law, the more my city needs me to counteract all of those para-churches, those liberals, those pussyfooters, those who will not take a stand on anything. You call me a King James Bible fanatic. <laughs> well, thank you. You are absolutely right. Thank you for calling me a King James Bible fanatic. And I'll fight against any college that believes any Bible other than this King James Bible. This business of, well, we use the King James Bible in our chapel and we may use it in our classrooms, but in our devotions, we, we like the understanding of the NIV better. You unbelievable liberal. I'm telling you, I think that school that would do that is heresy. I fight against that school. They're not, they're not going to produce firefighters and fanatics. They're going to produce and are producing, like the firemen, checker players. Go ahead. 
Let them make void the law. The more they do, the more I will love it and fight for it and hate every false way. I'm going to, just like the psalmist said, he did. I have changed. I'm not going to hold back. I'm going to let her rip. In this age and in this time and what we're seeing happen and we're seeing what's happening in our country and in our churches today and in the lives of God's people and our homes and everything around us being destroyed because preachers, have allowed them to make void thy law and didn't preach what they should have out of this law. Go ahead. Let them make void the law. The more they do, the more I'll love it and fight for it and hate every false way. Do you know that my ministry of preaching is, I preach only two kinds of sermons. Only, always have, two kinds. It's easy to tell. I preach a personal sermon and I'll probably do that maybe the next time I have you on my channel. I preach to you personally, trying to help you, instruct you, encourage you, rebuke you, exhort you. I preach those kind of sermons, personal sermons. The other I kind of I preach is a positional. I preach personal and I preach positional. So you will know your position and what God wants us to be in our position. What position we need to take and hold to. I have always been a King James Bible believer. That has always been my position. Then they come out with these other versions. I like to call them what they really are, perversions. I'm telling you, because they come out with these other versions, just like the psalmist said in both verses 127 and 128, the first words of both of those verses is, therefore. They came out with other versions, therefore. The psalmist said, therefore, they made void the law. I'm going to love it more. I'm going to esteem it higher more. So the more they make it void, the more I'm going to love it. The more they write new ones, the more I'm going to fight for this one called the King James Bible. I'm going to defend this one. I'm going to read this one. I'm going to believe this one. And as best I can, I'm going to obey this one. Isn't it strange they call us fundamentalists ignorant and shallow? But we can understand the King James Bible and don't have to have it paraphrased? <laughs> like the other versions are? Ever thought about that? You take Moody Bible Institute says we're unlearned. Then I ask the question, why do they have to have the simple Bible, the paraphrased Bible, and we don't? Good question, huh? I've got the answer right there. Did you know we understand the King James Bible? For example, they come out with the NIV. Therefore, I love the King James Bible more. They come out with the ASV. Therefore, I love the King James Bible more. They come out with the NASV. Therefore, I love the King James Bible more. They came out with the good news for modern man. Therefore, I love the King James Bible more. I hate every false way more. And the other versions are false. Their inspirer, the one who inspired those other versions, is called S-A-T-A-N, Satan. God only has one book. God only has one word. The whole issue is to merchandise the Christian. In other words, they make money on printing falsehood. If that's not true, then why don't they just give them away? No, they make money on them. Sadly to say, some of real true Christians are buying some of them and using them themselves. Shame, shame, shame! When God has only written one book, I hate every false way. The Gideons, American Bible Society, the corruptible seed that they have, I fight mission boards who have made void thy law. I fight Southern Baptists who have made void thy law. I fight denominations that have made void thy law. I fight the colleges who make void thy law. I fight universities who make void thy law. I fight television who makes void thy law. I fight radio programs, radio programs who make void thy law. They have made void thy law. Therefore, I'm going to fight. Especially in this day. You know why? Listen to me. You know why? I have five children still living. 
Two of them are Baptist pastors. My others are saved, trying to raise their children to the glory of God. You know why I'm going to fight? I want those children to have a chance to live in a society and go to a church holding on to the King James Bible and getting uplifted and getting hope and getting help and getting direction and getting that which they need to make it in this sinful life. I'm going to fight for that. Fight. I'm going to fight colleges and universities in Lynchburg, Virginia that do not hold to it. Or the Maranatha Baptist in Wisconsin that would not hold to it. Or the Pillsbury Baptist in Minnesota that would not hold to it. Or the Bob Jones University in Greensville, South Carolina that wouldn't hold to it. Or Biola in California. Or Focus on the Family. Or whatever it might be. They have made void thy law. Therefore, listen, why don't you pray they change instead of praying I will change? They changed at least once already by getting their new versions. And the only way I've changed is to love this one that I have and not another version but the old King James Bible more because they love it less. Therefore, why don't you get mad at them for changing their position? Why would you get mad at me for not changing? Check it out. Churches are dying everywhere. Why? You can't have a live church with a dead book. There's no way in God's heaven that can happen. No way, no way, no way. We need some therefores from you who are listening to me right now. At work, you hear a dirty joke. You need to have a therefore. I have always preached about the blood, but because we have some who make void thy law, therefore I hate every false way. Listen, something else. I have always preached against homosexuality, but because they have now political clout, queer parades, and all the rest of that, therefore I hate every false way. Is that wrong? I used to preach always have on effeminate men, but they have not always worn earrings and necklaces as they do now. Therefore, I'm going to preach against it. I was raised when men didn't wear earrings and necklaces, and they still don't. Men re really don't. Real men. Therefore, I used to preach against women wearing shorts and men's apparel, but they have made void thy law. Therefore, 50 years ago, ladies didn't. And by the way, 50 years later, right now, ladies still don't. Men never used to wear long hair. Men still don't. But they made void thy law. Therefore, I never used to have to preach against Christians listening to any, to and buying this rock music and contemporary music and so-called Christian music. I'm talking about Amy Grunt and Sandy Patty and worldly out quartets and all the rest. It's about time. Don't you understand? It's about time. If they make void thy law, therefore, I am going to love this one more. I'm going to love it more than fine gold. I get more excited about preaching than I ever did. And you know why? Because there's no charismatics that's going to out-excite me. All over tonight, the charismatic churches are full, and we have fundamental Baptist preachers exe exegeting the Bible. And the fundamental preachers have become dead lifeless. Therefore, we need to rise up and get excited about the things of God again. I've always preached against Hollywood movies. Still do. TV, VCRs, and all the things that bring in the wickedness in our lives. Yeah, I've changed. But they've changed more. And as more, as they, as more that they change, I'm going to change more. I mean, I have always been for soul winning, but when they come out with this new lifestyle evangelism stuff, therefore, I am going to make soul winning the most premier, and I still do. I believe he that winneth souls is wise. And we need to win more. 
We need to pass out more gospel tracts. We need to say more about the Lord Jesus Christ and the gospel than we ever have before. And let me say here, there's a great attack on us for the Great Commission. The very fact that we take the gospel and go door to door, house to house, business to business, and so forth. Did you know there was a day when we in America, listen to me right now, and I'm about to close, but listen to me. Did you know that there was a day when we in America didn't have abortion clinics? We did not have queer parades. We did not at one time have Bible versions. We dead sure didn't have nude beaches. And we didn't have mini skirts and short shorts and women wearing tight pants and VCRs and cable vision and MacArthur's bloodless, gos bloodless gospel and drama items and contemporary Christian rock and heavy metal and women governors and women mayors and, and now a woman running for president and now a woman vice president and congresswomen and ERA and feminists and queers out of the closet. I'm just saying we have gone haywire. I've changed. I'm going to preach more hard than I ever have before, but yet to the Christian, I'm going to try to lift them up and build them up and encourage them and give them the right direction from the Word of God where they can have a life of peace and blessing from the Lord in this wicked hour. The world has changed. Therefore, so have I. As the world changes more, so will I. As the church changes more, so will I. And as Baptist preachers change more, so will I. Therefore, criticizing me if you want to, but you're talking and looking at a man that takes a stand against all the sinfulness and wickedness and worldliness that there is, and I take a stand for the King James Bible, and I think you ought to as well. In fact, I know you ought to as well. All I'm doing is defending the inspiration and the preservation of God's holy word. They made this void. Therefore, I am going to honor it more, love it more, believe it more, obey it more, and lift it more. They made void thy law. Therefore, I love the word already, but I love it more than gold now. I love the word already, but I love it more than fine gold now. Therefore. Now, if you're going to criticize me because of my preaching, why don't you take Psalm 119 out of your Bible? Because that's exactly what the psalmist is saying. They have made void thy law. Therefore. He was saying, therefore, I'm going to love it more. I'm going, to, I'm going to preach it more. I'm going to teach it more. I'm going to honor it more. I'm going to obey it more. I'm going to love it even more than gold or even fine gold. The world has changed. And it's changed a lot in the last, oh, probably, I, I, I don't know how to associate how many years, but it's been a long time. But we've watched it gradually change to where it's at now and it is a disgrace therefore I changed in direct proportion of the world's change you can get mad at me if you want to and all the fundamentalists for what we say about the liberals but why don't you get mad at the liberals who have destroyed and ruined all the hopes of our children's future and God's churches. And what they're saying about us right now, why don't you get upset that they criticize we preachers who really preach the truth? You get upset that I criticize them. Why don't you get upset that they're destroying the future of you, your family, <clears throat> your children, your church, your city, your state, your country, they are destroying it. And we better not elect the one who hates God 
and hates his book. We better elect one who will hold to the old-fashioned independence and the Constitution. And that's not a political statement. That's a true statement. We need somebody that's going to help uplift the Word of God. I hate every false way. Thank you for tuning in. I hope you will again. And I hope that one day I'll be able to have the honor and the privilege of shaking your hand and saying, I love and appreciate you for taking the stand you're taking in these last days. God bless you, God bless you my friend. Believe it or not, I do love you. <clears throat>